Hello everyone, and welcome to this new video tutorial for Maverick Render. In the previous tutorial we learned environment light sources, like the ambiences or the sun. In this tutorial we will learn how to create and use Maverick's area lights. So let's get started and drop an ambience that has Maverick lights. You can see from the lights panel that we have now two lights in the scene. Selecting a light reveals its parameters in the attribute editor, as usual. The intensity slider changes the light's emitting power. Next to each light you will find the shortcut icons to lock, disable, or hide from the camera. Let's disable the second light and work with the first one only for the moment. Now only the first light illuminates, making it clearer how changing the intensity affects the scene. The light color can be controlled by a Kelvin temperature value, to make it warmer or cooler. A custom color can also be used, but remember to disable the Kelvin toggle which overrides the custom color input. These are very simple properties, drastically changing a scene's mood. Experiment with them and get used to how they affect your renders. Let's dive into creating Maverick lights, but first delete the existing lights. Select them and click the X icon. There are several ways to create lights, and all of them are fairly easy. The first way we will learn is placing lights around the camera using the default light creation icon. This icon unrolls a list of options to create lights automatically at different places of the scene. These positions are relative to the camera, so that creating a light to the left, will always be to the left of the camera. There is also an option to create a spotlight, but we will come back to this later. Let's create a light at the top of the scene. Zoom out using the mouse wheel to better see where the light is. A light has indeed been added at the top of the scene. We can create more lights. Let's make one to the left to see what happens. Now one at the right. This method is a very easy way to create a basic lighting setup placing lights around the camera. These positions are relative to the camera, so that creating a light to the left, will always be to the left of the camera. If we zoom out again and turn the camera, like this, then create a light to the left. The light appears on the left side of the camera. Keep this in mind when navigating your scene before creating new lights. Let's remove these lights and reset the camera position. You can also create spotlights, a type of light that considerably changes how the scene looks. Spotlights emit lights within a constrained angle, creating a more dramatic lighting. Now let's switch the user interface to the lighting mode, by pressing the F3 key. The lighting user interface shows two shaded views that help placing lights more comfortably. The shaded views offer the possibility to view the scene from a light standpoint. Click on the combo box that displays the list of scene cameras of one of the shaded views, and you will now have the option to select a light. We are now looking at the scene from the light's perspective. Using the regular navigation controls, navigate the shaded view. The render updates accordingly. This makes it very easy to place lights, and spotlights in particular by aiming directly to the object you want to illuminate. Create another spotlight. You can now select this new light in the second shaded view, to independently position it freely. This light placement method works for any light. Create a new light at the top for example. It immediately becomes available from the combo box. Select it and position it exactly as you want from the shaded view, with great placement accuracy. You can get closer just like you would with a camera, and the light gets closer to the scene simultaneously. Let's delete all the lights again and learn another way to create lights. We will now learn about the camlight method. The camlight tool can be accessed with this icon, or by pressing the S key on your keyboard. The camlight tool simply creates a new light exactly matching the active camera's position and orientation. Press the S key on your keyboard to create a new camlight. Move the camera to the right for example, and press the S key again. Another light have been created right behind the camera. Reset the camera again, and move it to the left. Press the S key, and here is another light. No matter how lights were created, they can all be positioned again using the shaded view from the light's viewpoint. 
You can turn off lights to work on a specific one, and place it exactly as you want. Positioning lights using this method makes it extremely easy and precise. You can disable the lights from being visible from the camera, so they don't get in the way while creating new ones, using the eye icon. You can also reposition existing lights to match the camera's viewpoint, by selecting them before pressing the S key. Let's delete the lights from the scene again. The last way to create lights in Maverick, is called Normal Light. It creates a light based on the object's normals. You can enable it using this button, or pressing the A key on your keyboard. Press the A key. The mouse cursor has changed for a crosshair type. If you click anywhere on an object now, a light will be created exactly in the right position and orientation, to create a reflection where you clicked. As long as the normal light tool is enabled and a light is selected, you can keep repositioning it, and it updates interactively. You can hold the mouse button down and drag the cursor for unmatched precision in placing highlights exactly where you want them. But there is more. You can find a complete list of shortcuts clicking on the question mark icon. This quick help menu lists every shortcut available in Maverick. All the light creation and manipulation shortcuts are presented here. Let's try a few of them. With the normal light tool still enabled, hold the control key and click somewhere on your object. This creates a new light. The new light is automatically selected, meaning you can keep repositioning it at will as we did before. If you want to reposition another light, simply select it from the lights panel and click on an object. Hold the control key again, to create yet another light. Turn off and hide the second and third lights to keep only the first one, and select it. The normal light tool is still enabled, so you can still reposition the selected light. By scrolling the mouse wheel, you can pull the light closer or push it further away from the object. You can also change the light's intensity using shortcuts. Hold the control key and scroll the wheel again, and the light intensity changes interactively. Scroll forward to increase the intensity, and backward to reduce it. This shortcut is exactly the same as using the light's intensity slider. As with any slider in Maverick, you can reset it by right-clicking on it. You can also make the light larger, or smaller using a shortcut. Watch the light size parameters as we will change the light size interactively. Hold the shift key, and scroll the mouse wheel forward to make the light larger. Scroll the mouse wheel backward to make the light smaller. Be careful to not make the size too small. It is worth remembering that a Maverick light can have different shapes beside the default rectangle. It can be a disc, a sphere, a cylinder or a custom object. The normal light tool does not disengage itself, it is important to remember to exit the tool manually. If you don't exit the normal light tool, clicking on the scene will keep repositioning the latest light. To exit the normal light tool, simply enable the selection tool for example. You can also do so by pressing the V key on your keyboard. In general, and regardless of the tool you are using, pressing the V key will return to the default selection mode and ensure you are no longer using another tool. Let's delete the scene lights one last time, and check a very handy light option. Create a new light, for example using the normal light tool now that you master it. Increase the size, using the shift key and the wheel mouse so the light border is easily visible in the teapot's reflection. By default the Maverick light borders are perfectly sharp, which is not always desirable. Remember to hide the light from the camera if you don't want it to get in your way. Luckily, the light has an option to deal with sharp light edges, the light gradients. Select the light to display its properties. You will need to enable the expert UI, to access the gradients parameters. Among a few other advanced options, a new gradients rollout has appeared at the bottom of the light parameters. The light gradients are advanced parameters and will be the subject of a dedicated video. We will just overview how to enable them. Enable the gradients. This gives access to different gradients types. 
Enable the radial gradient. The light immediately looks rounder and softer. You can control gradients per light side. Enabling the top gradient option for example will produce a soft gradient at the light's top edge only. Let's reduce the light's intensity a bit to better see the gradient. The gradients provide an easy way to mimic studio lights with reflectors and diffusers for improved realism. There is one independent gradient per light side. Enable the bottom one for example, and the same gradient appears at the light's bottom edge. But this will be the subject of another tutorial, going much deeper with lights. As you can see, Maverick offers a very powerful and versatile lighting system, but we've just scratched the surface. That's it for this tutorial. Stay tuned for more Maverick tutorials. Have fun rendering with Maverick!